It's Friday once again, everybody, and welcome back to the Forbidden Cast for episode 21, I think it is. I always do this every single time. I always do this. I really hope it's episode 21. <sighs> Don't mind me. Okay. Well, the Forbidden Cast... Uh... Okay, yeah. The last episode was Forbidden Cast episode 20. Metalocalypse has returned. That's right. If you missed last week's episode, check it out. If I remember, I'll put the little, uh, the little eye circle in the corner. If, uh, if you were watching this on TV, um, it probably won't be there. But if you're watching this on, on your mobile device or, on, something, else on a laptop, or computer, you'll probably see it there. You probably click that there if. It's there, if I didn't forget to put it, which I probably will. Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> but anyways, everybody, welcome to my show. It's gl I'm, I'm glad to have you back. Uh, and I really appreciate the uh, constant views. Um, so goodness me, uh, what is there to talk about today? Well, <laughs> since it's Friday, and for most people that means it's... Uh, uh, tomorrow and on the weekend you'll be off so do as I'm doing right now pour yourself a nice beverage get comfortable and uh, enjoy the show <laughs> right now I'm enjoying a nice uh, a nice Captain Black Captain Morgan um, with uh, some good old fashioned Pepsi just in a glass good old good old rum and coke well, rum and cola, because it's Pepsi-Cola, not Coca-Cola. Um, also, apologies in advance if you hear some clink-clanking going on. Um, in the downstairs apartment from me, uh, some old tenants uh, left, and then now they're just kind of doing some renovations down there. So if you hear some, some clicking, some clacking, some noise, do not be alarmed. I'm not dying yet. Um... There's just, <laughs> just some stuff's going on. Um, so one super exciting piece of news that I have for myself personally that I'm very excited to share with you. That was me. That that noise there was me hitting my hand on the microphone. Oopsie. Um, after all of the bitching and whining that you all had to endure listening to me complain about not having my Epiphone ghost horse, after all of these months, all this time... Finally, <laughs> finally, I have it. I have it in my grasp. I have the Epiphone Brendan Small signature ghost horse, and I love it. <laughs> Boy, I'm gonna have to turn that down. Oopsies, my bad. Um, but goodness me, it is such a nice guitar. It's so nice. Like, it feels nice. It plays extremely nice. It sounds nice. And it's just, goodness, it's just so nice to look at. Um, my, as I was discussing probably in almost every single episode leading up to uh, my pre, uh, like my pre-order, pre-order of the guitar, um, I was kind of having this kind of like struggle with, with like the color of the guitar because in some pictures it looked super gray, some colors it looked, you know, more charcoal looking, some it looked like an almost weird green, yellowish, um, and the, uh, the color of the guitar is actually very, very interesting, but the color of mine anyways, um, is definitely more gray with a really, really nice faint, uh, black burst around it, um, but there is one spot on the guitar near the, I guess the wing, as you'd call it, like the wing, where basically where your arm would rest while you're playing, like where your, um, the, the meat of your arm, I don't know, is it your forearm? Is your forearm the part one, is your forearm the one where like, you know, people like, oh, feel my muscles, is that your forearm? Or is your forearm the one like where your hands attached and the elbow. I don't know, I'm gonna call it my forearm. <laughs> I'm gonna call that one my forearm. <laughs> Anyways, where that part there usually leans on an explorer-shaped guitar body, um, that part there is kind of that almost very faint green yellowish, but it's still very gray. The guitar is very very gray, but 
it's just, oh my god it's so beautiful to look at and it just everything about it it sounds nice like I, uh, I can honestly probably talk about it for this entire episode I mean it's been five minutes into the episode already and I've basically talked about nothing and talked about this guitar if you have the chance if you even if you don't like Brendan Small or his music you should and if you like explorer shaped bodies you should absolutely consider getting one of these guitars because they're uh, they're so good they're so good and honestly I can I feel like I can honestly say and this isn't just blowing smoke up of Epiphone's ass this is me being like genuine right now this is a made in China guitar and it is after taxes Canadian ta dollars um, it only came up to I should I shouldn't say only but it came up to twelve hundred dollars um, this guitar plays and sounds just as good as my fifteen hundred dollar Chapman uh, MLV like the two are very very hand in hand if you if you were to play them side by side sound wise like look wise playing wise absolutely both of them you can look at them and be like i wouldn't be able to tell the price difference in between these two um and that's what i feel like a lot of guitars you get you pay a certain amount for a guitar and like it should just be like a standard that like okay like it, you know a thousand dollars and up like they should all just be good guitars even 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 at that like seven hundred dollars and up they should all be good guitars i mean from my experience thus far with um you know jackson's x series guitar which is um guitars that are you know mid-ranged so you know from like 600 to you know about a thousand um all those guitars, all the X series guitars that I've played so far, and the ones that I own, are extremely nice, and they play super well. They sound really nice. Um, I have no complaints about them. Even their, I mean, their JS series line of guitars, I will admit, they do feel cheaper. Like compare comparing the JS series line of guitars from Jackson to the Epiphone. Uh, ghost horse or even my epiphone like custom pro les paul which was only eight hundred dollars um at least that's what it was priced at the guitar store that i bought it from um like even at that like the the js series do feel much cheaper like there is a different quality there like the feeling of the quality does diminish um but overall like if you have someone who's brand new at playing guitar like it doesn't really matter cuz you got to get used to playing guitar but like you know i've been playing since jeez how long ago was that um i mean the first time that i i was actually interested in playing guitar i was in either sixth, sixth grade, I think. Um, so however old I would have been. So I didn't even know how old I would have been at that point. Um, I don't know, but it's been a while. <laughs> uh, it's been a while that I've been playing guitars and I've had different guitars in my hand. And, um, even now owning as many guitars as I do. Uh, yeah, like it's, yeah. <laughs> I can definitely feel the difference between a fifteen hundred dollar guitar and a four hundred dollar guitar, like one hundred one hundred percent. I mean, you know, in the mid tier kind of level, like the X series, uh, like you know, seven hundred to a thousand dollar range guitars, like yeah, it starts getting you know, there still is like a quality difference for sure. Um, but overall, because even that, comparing my Epiphone Snow Falcon to my Jackson Kelly um, X-Series, my X-Series Jackson Kelly, 
I do feel a little bit slight difference. I don't know if it's just because of two different manufacturers or what have you, but like I do feel a slight difference in the quality. I'm not saying that the X series Jackson is bad by any means. Absolutely not. Um, I'm just saying overall, like between the two, I can definitely feel a slight and I want to emphasize a very slight <laughs> difference in quality. Um, but not too much, to be completely honest. But anyways, um, yeah. I know I talk about guitars a lot on here. And I'm sure people who watch the show who aren't in totally into guitars and whatever probably find that absolutely boring. And I'm sure that there's some people who like watching guitar specific related stuff you might absolutely love this and you know whatever um but i like to branch out to try to do as much as i can because i want to i want to like this is a thing that i want to do is i like a lot of different things and i know a lot of other people like a lot of different things and i hope that there's a few people out there in the world <laughs> who um don't yeah uh, who like some of the completely other different things that I do as well, besides music and guitars and gear and all that nonsense. Um, Cause I mean like, yeah, I like video games. Did you check out my uh, Mega Man X theme cover? If not, check that out here. Am I gonna remember to put the thing up? Probably not, once again. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> go check that out. Uh, did I release anything since then? I don't think so. I think it was just my other episode of the Forbidden Cast. Oopsies. Um, but, with all that said, uh, where was I going with all this? Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Is Lately, I've been watching a lot of Cold Ones. And for anyone who doesn't know what Cold Ones is, it is... Um, I mean that too. Like I feel like if you if you know what cold ones and ones is, then you should probably know who the main hosts are. Um, <laughs> but essentially, it's like a, it's a comedy YouTube channel where it's also a podcast, and then the Max and Chad, who are the two guys who run it, um, they're two Australian guys who are <laughs> extremely funny, um, and uh, yeah, they just basically get drunk and do stupid shit <laughs> and then they they have a whole team of people who film it and uh yeah it's just awesome and they're really really funny guys and they like do like little skits and what have you um so i mean i highly recommend checking out the channel if you haven't or you don't know who they are whatever they're, <laughs> they're really funny if you um uh, if you get offended very easily i would recommend not checking it out because uh, their sense of humor is uh, not, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say uh, very PC. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for the whole family, I should say. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been watching a lot of them because they're absolutely hilarious. And then, I mean, as always, I've been watching a lot of Super Mega. Um, and throughout all of these channels that I enjoy and watch and everything like that, there's one thing... And that, like, I try to, like, that I grow, take inspiration from is one of the biggest things that I've noticed that I find that my channel is lacking and can definitely use the improvement of is, uh, well, actually, it's two things. There's is two major things. So, the first one that I really, really want to, you know, eventually somehow get is a co-host because like it's just so much easier and f like better to be able to riff on stuff with someone you know instead of just by yourself all the time and obviously i can have guests on the show well on like the podcast or whatever but like you know it would just be so awesome to just have someone to do just dumb shit with you know to do stupid videos with and you know to be able to you know make skits and what have you and do dumb like music videos with like lighthearted just goofy stuff and even that too to have someone to do the podcast with you know so it's just not my stupid boring voice for a half an hour out of your day um <laughs> so 
that's one of the things that's been like really on my mind lately that like I really wish I had a co-host and before the old Forbidden Cast, the first version of the Forbidden Cast that is already out that you can check out on my channel, which I would very uh, happily encourage you to do. Um, <laughs> uh, I used to, my co-host used to be uh, Lucas Jakes, um, a really good buddy of mine, and uh, I miss him dearly because I haven't seen him in a very long time and even talked to him. Uh, used to talk to each other on the phone quite a bit, but he started work um, and his work is very, he, he cuts trees, you know, and he's on the road cutting trees with his company. Um, and yeah, I don't really get to, cause by the time, like he's basically asleep or just waking up about to go to work whenever I'm coming home from work and I'm, I'm too much in a crabby, miserable, shitty mood <laughs> whenever I'm going to work that I kind of just either like to put on a podcast and not really think about anything or listen to music um on my way to work so and plus not only that like he's like on his way to bed at that time too um whenever i am going to work so unfortunately that you know since he started work uh, we haven't really been able to communicate and talk over phone like obviously you send each other memes and stuff like that on instagram and you know we do occasionally text each other you know but like yeah i miss i miss him i miss him greatly lucas if you're watching this uh, i hope you're doing doing good man um <laughs> uh but uh yeah but no like it's also got me thinking too like about like that whole you know having a co-host is like man like i really wish you know some of my friends like shared some of the um same like wanting to do the same kind of like dumb shit you know like and take this and make it a career you know like do what because like I love making stupid videos I absolutely love it coming up with the ideas shooting it you know putting it all together like I love that the only thing is that I struggle with whenever it's just me is that it's the fact that it's just me you know and if anyone who knows me personally I like I may not I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I don't come off as though I am, but I'm a very self-conscious person. <laughs> I'm really, I really, really am. Like, you know, even though some people, you know, maybe I might act a certain way around some people. I might act like, you know, one of those people who's like, oh, I don't give a shit what people think about me. But like, I do, you know, I don't crave um, people's, you know, like attention or whatever like that. Like, I don't care about that. You know, but like, I would rather, you know, be on someone's good list rather than their bad list, just like most people, you know, but I mean, obviously I can't please everyone. Um, but yeah, that's just it. Like, I don't know where, I'm, where was I going with that? Oh my, uh, I think I need another drink. Hold on. Just give me a sec. <laughs> but needless to say back in the day, back in high school, my buddy Matt, and myself um whenever there was like an oral presentation that you know could be accompanied by like a video that we can do or whatever me and my buddy matt would kill it all the time we would make these stupid awesome videos that i wish i still had i think i still have one of them but it's like they're just cringy weird but still funny it's just like dumb stupid humor which is what i love the kind of humor like dark stupid idiotic humor <laughs> that me and my buddy matt because we've been friends since like kindergarten like that we share and we do have that bond because we do you know <laughs> we do there's like watch the same stupid shit and what have you um so it's like whenever we got together to make videos like it would be awesome you know like i had kind of like we would riff ideas off each other which was awesome so we'd have like funny stupid ideas and whatnot and then you know i kind of had the more i mean i'm not i'm not saying that i'm super great with a camera but like i had a little bit more of this cinematography kind of handled you know like for shots and whatnot because I mean, I did watch so much YouTube and like I watched, you know, I, I didn't, whenever I watched something, I wouldn't watch it just like once laugh at it. I would like 
watch it and rewatch it so like okay what's funny about this you know i would just dissect videos like i mean especially like animated vid- videos like ego raptor and oni cartoons and all these old uh youtube like animator youtubers who would just make these stupidly hilarious um cartoons on for youtube that were like huge back in the day and back in the good old youtube days whenever i was in like ninth grade and like in high school um and yeah like i would look at the angles that they do stuff you know it's just like and all that you know it would give me ideas so it's like whenever me and my buddy matt would like want to make these videos for class we could you know i'd we'd have some sort of creative vision you know both like artistically and then as well as you know like we both had the same stupid sense of humor so it's like we bring we do our oral presentation press play on the video like we'd be all awkward and shy up at the front of the stage but we press play on the video and how like calm and stupid the videos were we'd actually make people laugh like and i remember so many times um because you know me and my buddy matt were both super quiet in class and in school in general um whenever we play these videos for the class like people would laugh and be like wow these guys are actually funny you know and after class i remember you know some people actually coming up like wow good job on the video like i didn't know you guys were so funny you know like um uh and like, yeah and like it was super awesome and i really miss be able to have someone to make videos like that with um and but unfortunately like my buddy matt like he i mean he's a carpenter he's like doing what he does and i mean all to him and absolutely i support him all the way um and but he's still living in our hometown and i'm all the way down in get snow uh quebec so it's like you know it's not especially in this time you know it's not super simple to just kind of make these videos but speaking of which which actually just reminded me on my old laptop where i used to make videos on while i was living in north bay before i got my uh new computer uh i actually do have a bunch of footage on there that i should try to dig up um of a video pre-covid like very very pre-covid this was like maybe once the covid outbreak actually just started um me and my buddy matt actually filmed the video together and i was gonna actually have a segment on my channel called the adventure blogs adventure vlogs um but uh my old shitty laptop was just too much of like just too annoying to like actually make videos on that it never happened um because it was just like i wanted to do a lot of funny editing and whatnot and to make the video you know even that little bit more funny so i should actually try to dig those up and then try to put them out but um yeah i uh i definitely miss <laughs> i really definitely miss being able to just you know have matt at my disposal because he was always like pretty much down to do anything you know as, as long as it you know wasn't you know you know anything uncomfortable towards ourselves you know we, he was pretty down to do anything silly and goofy um but uh yeah so i should definitely do that i should definitely try to pop that out but at the same time too it's like i don't want to pop that out and you know people <laughs> enjoying it and being like this is funny and then being disappointed knowing that like it might be the only one of its kind but at the same time you know that might be worth it um but uh other than that the other thing because i mentioned that there's two things about watching super mega and having inspiration from all these other youtubers is uh is branding um and because i mean super mega has super mega you know so it's like super mega is matt and ryan um you know those are the two hosts names so it's like they have that and i mean even game grumps they have like dan and aaron you know they have you know a branding name and then i mean cold ones you know so it's like i really want to i really want to grow my channel out more and to i still want to hold the same stuff that i'm doing so keep doing you know gear reviews and uh having this podcast and then you know doing the cover videos and then songs releasings and all that 
Um, but branding is definitely something. And I even have ideas of what I want to do. And um, even in the next few months, I think some of that branding might come out just in case I ever do get a chance to actually get some more stuff happening, especially the more goofier, lighthearted stuff. So it's like fans of my like subscribers that I already have, which by the way, uh, the last time I checked, we also went up a, another subscription. So thank you, whoever subscribed. I really appreciate that. We're up to 43 now. So that's really, really cool. Considering that last year at this time, I think I probably only had like 20 something. That is a huge amount, which I, I am so grateful for. I mean, obviously I know I should calm down because it's not, you know, a thousand or whatever. But still, to me, the fact that there's 40 people subscribed to my, you know, over 40 people now that are subscribed to my channel. Whenever I basically first started this, I had like maybe 10, <laughs> you know, that, that kind of blows my mind. Um, and even that, whenever I just started, that was like last year. So it's like, who knows the possibilities of where this might lead. Um, and I feel like now that I'm getting more accustomed to my daytime job, well, technically nighttime job, if you really want to think of it. I hope you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> the, the job that's actually making me money right now that isn't, you know, music or this YouTube thing or this podcast or what have you. Um, you know, now I'm getting more accustomed to that and it's getting, you know, more easier to do and less stressful for me. You know, I feel like this podcast, especially in the last fewer episodes, I feel like I was more upbeat and everything has been um, good. And I myself personally, like on a personal level, like I have been feeling more just better about myself, um, which I, I'm, I'm, I hope is reflecting through, <laughs> especially with the podcast, because I know it's not super fun to listen to a downer all the time. Um, I mean, I'm not going to say that, you know, future episodes, I'm not going to be a downer, but I know it's more fun to listen to someone who's more energetic and uh, everything like that. And I'm not being fake energetic. It's just, you know, sometimes, sometimes I am down and then sometimes I'm fucking super up. So, <laughs> you know, the joys of, uh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm manic, <laughs> probably not. I, I would not, I'm not, I'm not going to go that far to say that I'm manic depressed. <laughs> but with all that said, um, I do have some plans. So if you do see some changes happening on this channel, and if you're subscribed to it, um, I would really hope that, uh, you are, uh, accepting of my decisions that I'm taking. I mean, it's not going to be anything drastic. Like I'm still going to try to put out a new cover or a gear demo or what have you every Monday. I know I didn't do one this Monday. I wanted to, um, I actually had an unboxing video for my Epiphone ghost horse, but then I just ended up playing the Epiphone ghost horse. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just completely forgot to actually edit the video or anything. So maybe that'll be this week's episode. And I also got another uh, video um, for another kind of idea mini series that I want to start up, which I've hinted at my parents already. So mom and dad, if you're watching this, um, you have kind of an idea of what it might be. If you don't, then you'll see. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah. Anyways, everybody, we're almost at 30 minutes. It's 29 minutes now. Um, and uh, I still haven't given the song of the week, which is still a segment that I feel like is really important to keep on uh, on the show because it's one of the biggest things. But what, oh my, oh my, what have I been listening to? I've been listening to a lot of Haken or Haken. I think it's Haken. I believe it's Haken. Um, to a lot more Haken lately. I go through phases where, like, I listen to it so much that I just, you know, bore myself out with it because I listen to it so much. And then, you know, I move on to something else for, like, a week or two, and then I come back to it. And <laughs> I'm constantly in search of new music, um, which last week I think I suggested uh, Cassiope. 
um, which I really hope some of you checked out because I think it's really, really well deserved to be checked out. Um, oh, actually, I don't think that I, I don't think I said uh, this one. Oh my, they're using saws downstairs. Goodness. Um, okay. Here's one that actually has a music video to it that I will put uh, a link in the description as always um, that I actually wanted to mention a couple of weeks back. But there is a band called Freak Kitchen. So I'm going to say that one more time but closer so you can fully understand what I'm saying. Freak Kitchen. Um, They are a really, really weird band. I don't like they're they're a metal like hard rock metal band like a modern hard rock band um so i feel like if i said hard rock i feel like most people would probably think of like you know deep purple or you know black sabbath or whatever i mean even that there people might you know be get upset with me and be like they're metal idiot um but um no uh like i mean modern hard rock um so it's like borderline metal but with like more cleaner vocals uh but uh yeah so the song the album that i'm recommending checking out i feel like that's so wrong the way i say that the album that i recommend taking a look at i don't know i need to improve my grammar drastically (laughs) um is cooking with pagans and for specific song there's actually a lot of really good songs on this album but because this song this song in specific has a music video to it and it's a really cool one too because it's a really good animation uh and it's has a if uh the overall theme of it has a good uh like kind of warning ish kind of like saying how fucked up modern society is uh is this song is called freak of the week by freak kitchen um once again i'll put the link in the description and then uh at the end of the video maybe i'll put it up at the thing and it'll be one of the squares that you can click on um but yeah check out freak of the week by freak kitchen because i think it's really cool i think it's a really good song and it's it's a really they got a really catchy hook in it and uh yeah and if you want to check out more of that album that the song is off of check out the whole album cooking with pagans there's another song on here uh that uh is a pretty hilarious name and even the song you know the chorus to it is is pretty hilarious as well but the overall message is uh pretty deep uh i feel like that's the overall theme of this album but uh this song the other song is uh saving in parentheses um well in brackets i should say sorry uh saving up for in and then not in brackets anal bleach (laughs) um which is again just kind of a, a song to reflect on modern society on you know especially whenever this album was out because this album was released in 2014 um but it's still a lot of this stuff still holds up today especially with tiktok and all that trash um i man i probably sound like such an old man by saying that but that's fine but uh anyways check out freak of the week check out this whole album and uh with that everybody i want to say Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it, especially if you made it all the way this far in the episode. Um, Yeah. Hope you enjoyed my babblings. I hope you uh, got some insight of some of the thoughts that have been going through my head lately. And, uh, oh, and I can guarantee that uh, there will be a gear review on, uh, gear review slash demo or whatever you want to call it, of the Epiphone ghost horse do not fear that will be coming eventually maybe after this weekend i don't know anyways everybody i hope you have yourself a wonderful day uh see ya (laughs)